Have you heard the story of how J. Myron first met me? His father owned horses. My father worked in Michael. So when I was about nine or ten months old, my mother and father walked up to J. Martin's house where they had horses for rent. My daddy rented horses to take me to see his family of sisters and brothers. So J. Martin was playing out in the yard, a little seven-year-old. My mother carried me several miles to get to their home. When she got there, she put me under a tree on my blanket. She went on up on the porch to talk with J. Martin's mother. The little boy found this baby under the tree, picked her up and carried her up on the porch to his mother and said, Mama, can we keep this baby? His mama already had several children at the time, several girls. She said, Son, we can't keep her now. This is her mama's only baby. So that was our first meeting. Thirteen years later, we were in school. He came to my house on a Saturday night, first time. He said, Ruth, would you be my wife when you finish school? I didn't know what a wife meant, but I said yes. About that time, my daddy walked in with his long johns on. He'd been in bed. J. Martin told him he would just ask Ruth to marry him. He said, I don't believe in long engagements. So I asked J. Martin to leave, which he did. He was back there on Sunday morning, taking us out to see a new bus. He was a bus driver. And I had a seat by the bus driver. A teacher got on and asked if she could have that seat. And he said, no, nope, it's already taken by Ruth. Other girls at school said, what does Ruth Green have that we don't have? Anyway, 13 years later, we had, St. Martin had built Sunnybrook store, and uh, Somebody kept asking why he didn't marry this girl he'd been going to see forever. He still didn't have things. He had made us a cabinet and a table. All he had was an old iron bed. Come leap here, I was working at knitting mill. I helped him buy a cook stove and furnish the material to fix four rooms for us in the apartment. One day, I walked down into Spruce Pine. 
had my blood test. The doctor said, who is the lucky guy? I told him it was Jamon. Okay, I'll make him pay for this. I'm not going to let you pay for it. J. Martin picked up the phone and the doctor said, there's a young man, a young lady who came in and had her blood test. What are you going to do about it? He said, well, I guess I'll have to come in and have mine. So he had his blood test bought their license, and carried them in his pocket from November until February. In February, he asked me, what are we going to do? Are we going to cause me to have to pay another $5 for the license? So we set a date for the 18th of February, 1940. Made no appointment with anybody to get married. So, of course, our pastor was out of town. Martin said, well, I was only as always wanted to perform our ceremony. So we came from Cranberry back to Henson Creek to her house, and she was cooking supper. She was so excited, she said, let me get this dirty apron off. I said, I'm just going to give it to me, I'll wear it. Anyway, Myron bought a car, one of Henry's little Fords, on a Saturday, so he could have some way to take me home on a Sunday night. And Zoni performed their ceremony, and I got my certificate, but I never remember ever saying I do or I will. But anyhow, we had 53 years and three beautiful children. We lost the oldest one at six year old, and Gloria, lost her beautiful brother and her Christmas present because he was born December 23rd. But now I'm happy with Gloria and have lived to be almost 100. At least I'm 99 and three quarters. And I'm still here enjoying Gloria and Edwin and his family and all of my good friends all around the world. Sweden, Norway, Iceland, and away down under. Thank you.